as, as many of you know, our son Zachary at age 24 was diagnosed with, with cancer. And at that point entered a classroom that we would stay in for two years. And two of the main items of curriculum were one was hope and the other was offense. In one sense, this human hope was a, um, was a roller coaster, sometimes from month to month, but you know, with radical highs and ra big drops and, and just up and down and up and down, and, and sometimes from hour to hour, some moment to moment. So he went on this journey with hope. And, and Zachary wanted to live more than anything in the world. He, he wanted to live. He wanted to get out of the hospital. He wanted to come home and drive his Jeep fast through the woods and walk around the neighborhood with his wife and his dog. And he wanted to go back to his job and work and, and go have kids and grow old. He wanted that more than anything. He never surrendered his human hope. At the same time, Zachary, who had been in Iraq and had, had watched his buddies, whom he knew, uh, get blown up. He knew their, their spouses and their children. He didn't have many illusions left about what was real and what wasn't. Zachary died. Zachary died, but Zachary understood, and he always understood, that the human hope, the hope that he was going to get better, was always an imposter. He trusted in a deeper hope, in a deeper reality. He trusted in that which is real. And this brings us to the final offense, which is the offense of ultimate reality. So here's the thing about Zachary. Zachary owned his classroom. He never said, shouldn't be me. You know, this is a mistake. Why me? Never. He owned his classroom, just like he owned his assignment when he was in Iraq. He knew the consequences, but he owned it. He knew that this was why he was here. There was a great teacher who said, it is for this that I have come into the world. Now, this is mine. And if you want a great mantra for this next month or next 50 years, the next time you're having a hard time with a situation or a challenge, this, this is why I came in the world. I mean, most of us think that we showed up to have a picnic, huh? And that's why we keep getting in trouble. That's why we suffer. We think we came here for a picnic. The next time we have that challenge, the next time you're telling yourself, this is a mistake. This can't be happening. This is why I came to this world. 1959, there's a movie called Black Orpheus. The scene is in Brazil, and it's a time of carnival when everything gets pretty chaotic. And these two young people have fallen uh, profoundly in love. They have each found the life quest with this other human being. They go to carnival. In the process, they get separated, and, and Black Orpheus looks everywhere. And you can imagine searching, searching, searching for his love, who is now, he doesn't know where she is, and finally finds her in the morgue. He picks up her body, her limp and lifeless body, and he begins walking up the mountain to his home. And on the way, he's repeating this, this mantra, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you see, it's that posture. It's that posture that allows us to overcome, finally, the final offense of ultimate reality, that which you and I are over against. And until we have a story, until we have a myth, until we have a way to say, yes, I am part of, I am one with that. But when we do grasp that word, that story, that symbol, when we begin to ritualize our life to rehearse, I am one with that. I am one with that. We don't have a way to do that. And once we do, we get delivered to a new place. And in that new place, uh, we can tell ourselves the story that I am offended by nothing. I am lifted up by all that is real. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am offended by nothing. 
I am lifted by all that is real. Thank you. Thank you for me, all of me. Thank you for you, all of you. And thank you for that of which I am a part now and forever, a part of at one with. I am offended by nothing. I am lifted by all that is real. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.